Let's look at how we can create some areas from existing model objects. In this example, I have the simple frame, and let's look at possibly generating a diaphragm for the roof level of this frame. To do that, I'm going to hold down my control key and select the members around the perimeter. Once I do that, if I look at the structure ribbon, there's an area from selected option, and if I click that, I will generate an area that's bounded by those four beams. Similarly, let's look at selecting the nodes on this side of the frame. I work my way around and click on the nodes. Once that's done, if I look up under the ribbon, I see area from selected is enabled again. And when I click that, I generate the area for that particular side. So maybe I could use that for a shear wall. Let's now look at how we mesh areas. If I select our top area and look in the inspector, we see we have an option to generate plates. I'm going to select that now. And when I do that over in the inspector, we see we have an option for specifying how thick the plates will be as well as their material. And when I do that, you see that I have actually generated a mesh around the perimeter. The beams are showing various gray and large sections here and those are located at the points where the nodes of our mesh intersected the beam and where there will actually be a connection of the plate element to that beam. Let's look at the front of the structure now and look at how we can put a hole and then mesh it. Let's now take our side area and select it and say we want to change it to generate plates as well. And when we do that we see this area gets meshed and you can see that the columns are now being connected at the mesh nodes, as are the beams at the top. It's important to know that visual analysis takes care of these common adjoining boundaries for areas and the nodes will match. Let's now look at this side area and draw a hole in it. To do that, let's make sure draw areas is selected from the structure ribbon. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a rectangular hole in the side of our area. When I do that, I click on it and see that it's really not a hole, so I'm going to switch that by changing its type from meshed area to hole. And now that I've done that, you see the new mesh is, does not have elements in our hole, so meshing takes care of holes automatically. I'm going to draw another embedded over area over here on the right. And now, as you see, it is a hole, but this one I'm going to switch from a hole to a meshed area. Now what's, what do I get by doing that? Well, I have the option now in a meshed area to override the mesh count, as well as the thickness of the material of the elements in that area. I'm going to override the mesh count, and the default is fairly small for the mesh area, and you see that the number of plates inside is, is much denser than the main area, and if you look closely, you'll see that the proper mesh connections are made so that the smaller plates are connected to the larger plates. So that in shows the value of having a meshed area.